hey guys what's up welcome back to my channel thank you so much for watching so in this video i wanted to talk to you guys about the coronavirus this has been the cause of near mass hysteria especially in the healthcare setting but definitely outside and in the general um, population people are really worried about this and you know i think it's mostly because we are not well educated on the virus and how it's going to present and how it spreads and what would be the effect on you, a potential carrier or um, infectee. <laughs> So basically the coronavirus has been out there for a long time but what's new about this one is that um, this particular strain has been causing a lot of major respiratory complications and that basically means problems with the lungs right so there is going to be a more concern for uh, bronchitis pneumonias and things like that and usually people who are at the extremes of age are more affected by lung diseases and less likely to recover and hence the fatality numbers so the virus is being called currently SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19, Coronavirus Disease 19 since it was first identified in December 2019 in China. So it was originally found in Wuhan province in China. The areas of most dense um, infection are, in addition to China, South Korea, Italy, Iran, and Japan as of early March. So like a couple days ago, this is the last updated information from the CDC. So how will you know if you have COVID or coronavirus? So the most common symptoms are going to be fever, cough, and usually it's a dry cough, but sometimes it can be productive, fatigue, and last piece that makes it most dangerous, the pneumonia or the respiratory symptoms. So you feel really short of breath, it hurts when you take a deep breath, and maybe you feel like you just can't breathe at all. So those are going to be um, like the most concerning symptoms, and if you do feel that way, you should present immediately to your nearest emergency room. So what we do know is that children are more likely to have a mild form of disease which is great because I have little ones and I'm always nervous about that. Bringing home something to them and infecting them is a major stressor for me. But the more likely population that's going to be affected by this would be like the elderly or people who are immunocompromised or have already a depressed immune system for some reason. So maybe they're on drugs for that. Maybe they have cancer and they're on chemotherapy. Pregnancy can be a cause of a state of immunocompromise. So those patients need to be very careful um, about noticing these symptoms early and presenting for treatment early. So as a point of comparison, the regular seasonal flu has a mortality rate of 0.1%. So in comparison to that, COVID or coronavirus has a mortality rate of about 2%. So that's why everyone is up in arms and pretty nervous about it. But we all just need to be cautious about how we go about our regular lives. Take universal precautions, wash your hands, um, cough into your <coughs> elbow um, or sneeze into your elbow, not into your hands. And if you do feel sick, go to the hospital if you have a fever, especially just because, you know, you want to have this identified quickly and you want to make sure that you don't infect others in your home and in your community. So last but not least, um, if you have traveled in the last two weeks and you are feeling symptomatic, please do go seek medical help. Me as a healthcare provider, someone who is at basically the front lines of someone who will come in with any respiratory compromise. As an anesthesiologist, I'll be the one that they call to help support the breathing if the patient needs to be intubated. I will be wearing my protective, personal protective equipment as I usually do. So that means a mask with also eye protection. And then I will also have a gown on and always gloves as per usual. So um, we'll be seeing cases for sure in my hospital. Um, as a level one center, we get a lot of referrals. Um, we've all been educated on how to treat patients with this disease. Even though it's scary, you know, ed education is powerful. So knowing what to to do in those situations will help us to treat people safely and also to prevent ourselves from also being affected. So with that being said, don't be nervous, don't be scared, but just be safe. All right, until next time, I'll see ya. And um, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave your comments below. And remember, the CDC does not recommend that you wear face masks in public to prevent respiratory viruses from being spread. It's about hand hygiene and also covering your cough and your sneeze. When I am out there and I see people coughing out, <coughs> no, not the time for that. Please people, cover.
your cough, cover your sneeze, you'll keep this disease from spreading, trust me.